we are seeing a big influx of Latin Americans, is that correct? And particularly Venezuelans, is that correct? Yes, there's been, uh, we've noticed there's a, an increase of individuals since the beginning of the year who have been coming directly from the southern border. And um, many of those individuals have come with, without any resources, not a dime in their pocket or, um, or connections with family or anything. And, and they're coming in, the majority are coming in with children. So it, it adds to the challenge. What is leading this? What is the cause and effect of them coming uh, to Charlotte? As, what, what is causing it? I think the, the biggest cause has been the decision of some governors in, in the southwest, southwestern part of the United States who are um, deciding to ship out many of these immigrant families to get them out of Texas. And um, when they're, uh, they're sending them to Washington or D.C. Uh, or New York, um, they are uh, they're stopping in Charlotte, maybe looking, maybe, maybe because Charlotte has a reputation of being a welcoming community, but also because when they are uh, shipped out, they have uh, immigration documents that um, requires for them to show up in a court or, or to show up in, a, in an immigration office. And so sh since Charlotte has an immigration court, I think many of them um, are coming here because of the immigration court. Was Charlotte aware that this was going to take place? Do you know, or were they aware that they were getting ready to get this influx of people that these Southwest governors were doing that, and did Charlotte have a heads up that this was gonna happen? No, no, I think we started seeing a, a trend since January, mm -hmm. but it's become more um, prevalent since May. And um, just the extent of the case management of a family who's basically homeless uh, and, and don't speak the language and have no resources, it's much, much more extensive for our organization. So when did that, you notice that it was happening here? When did you realize this was going to be an emergency or it was going to be a problem? Yeah, I think last week. Last week when, when um, we were not dealing with just one family but multiple families in the same situation. It's like, okay, we have something that's happening that is not common. Uh, to arrive to a community and, and to be picked up in a, in a street corner basically and say, hey, we have a two-year-old and we have nowhere to go. Um, and then when we, we, we see two or three under the same condition, we say, this is not, not normal, you know? And, and that's when we realized and looked back at the numbers and talked to our staff and said, yeah, this, is, this has been happening for a while, uh, but the numbers are starting to increase. So it's an organization we have to acknowledge and prepare and, and be proactive because if we're not proactive, this could become a humanitarian situation uh, in our community. So we want to make sure that we're ahead of the of the situation and help these families. And what kind of burden is it putting on your organization in the city of Charlotte? I think, I, I'm not sure if, if, for the city, I don't think they've, they've felt it yet, you know, I think it's a, it's a city. Uh, I think for us, it's just the uh, manpower to help the families, you know, because when they have no transportation, no clothing, no food, no shelter, it requires extensive work to get them out of the street immediately uh, to get them a place to where at least they could take a shower and to, um, and to you know, give them food and, and things like that. And, and so it's very extensive work with each, each one of those families. So we're trying to coordinate efforts uh, in reaching out to, to the community because I think between all of us, we can do the right thing and help these families that are arriving. Now you, uh, you touched on the legal concerns, but there's some health concerns too. There are health and legal concerns. Can you talk about that? Yes, yes, yeah. When there's migration and there is um, a lack of resources, it, it comes with a lot of challenges that the, the families face. And, um, and just recently we, we did have uh, a couple who were looking for assistance, health assistance directly. And so we already connected them with some of the resources we already have contact with. Um, but, um, but there are other factors that you don't consider until you're dealing with the family uh, that um, also affect the, their, their well-being. So we, we're hoping that all of us working together can, can address the situation. What, um, what's next for your organization? You said be proactive, yeah. but what's next? Yes, next. Um, 
I'm reaching out to the county. Uh, the county has an office that apparently deals with homelessness and, and, and displacement. So I'm, I'm reaching out to the county and see uh, what they may be able to, to offer or to assist us with. We are creating a, a closet uh, with the help of the Venezuelan Alliance of Charlotte, since many of those individuals are from Venezuela. We are uh, reaching out to other uh, migrant groups uh, who may identify with the journey and the, and the challenges so that they can help us. And we, we plan to have a fundraising event and a uh, clothes and food gathering event. Our annual fe festival, which is on September 17th, is a family festival that we do every year. So that's going to give us the opportunity to, it's a community, um, gather some resources so that we can redistribute those to the families. Now, I know you're seeing a heavy influx of Venezuelans. Is it, is it the system being bogged down also by other Latin American groups that are coming here, or it's not just Venezuelans? No, not just Venezuelans. We've seen the influx mainly from four different countries. We seem to match some national reports that, that we started seeing as, as of Friday. It was a com completely coincidental that when we spoke to the media about what was happening in Charlotte, that national news started coming out about uh, the, the sh shipping of, of immigrants to other, um, to other states out of Texas. And um, uh, so I lost my train of thought. You will be talking <laughs> about it's not just Venezuela. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so uh, out, uh, outside of the Venezuelan communities, we've seen three other uh, uh, countries that uh, have a significant number of individuals coming to Charlotte directly from the southern border. Uh, the second group are Colombians. Uh, the third group are uh, Cubans and Nicaraguans are, are the last group that we have identified. So, um, is there any other concerns except for legal health and you, when you don't basically have housing for them? Are there other concerns? Well, I think the, the biggest concern for us is um, the capacity to serve and, um, and the um, coordination of services to these individuals. Because uh, now that uh, our organization has been uh, publicized as an organization that are help, helping new arrivals directly from the border, uh, more people are looking for our services and, and we want to be there for them. So our biggest concern is just making sure that we adapt quickly and we help those families. If, have you seen a leveling off of the numbers or you think that it's only going to get, they're going to go higher? Yeah. Um, unless there is a um, coordinated effort or a, an agreement between Washington and Texas, um, because all of this is happening because they are in disagreement on, on how to handle the immigrant families coming in, unless they come up with some sort of um, plan uh, to, to manage the influx and to um, address the challenges that those families are coming with, I'm expecting that this is going to continue, and, uh, and I don't see a solution at the federal level or a coordinated effort with those other states anytime soon, but something is going to need to happen very soon. So we, we see this as a dire situation, at, at, or, or an emergency, a big emergency? Yeah, I, I think um, if we don't pay attention right now and don't address what's happening right now, um, it could very well become a humanitarian situation um, within our borders. And, um, and it's a community here in Charlotte. We want to make sure that we are proactive and not wait until that happens. So if, if, if they are able to s make arrangements where um, the, um, we have a, a better system, more coordinated system, uh, along with, with the government, um, you know, so, so it, we'll, we'll just do what we can as an organization to help them. All right. Anything else you want to add? No, just, just the thank you of the, the media has been amazing in, in sharing the stories and in uh, helping us um, raise awareness so that the community can get behind the efforts that we are putting together.